Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Radio Entrepreneurs, the show that's constantly streaming stories of entrepreneurship in real time, how people are dealing with this economy, adapting, and stories of success, as well as stories of you know fortitude to some degree. Uh, I want to say hello to my guest host, the one and only fabulous Mark Z from Mark Z's Legal Staffing. Hello, Mark. Jeff, great to be here. Very thank you for your kind words. No, always. And uh, our next guest is Valerie Samuels, partner at Aaron Fox. Is that correct? Aaron Fox, close enough. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I might have read that wrong. That mine, mine was a little bit different. But uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about your practice and uh, what we're going to focus on today? Sure. So I'm an employment lawyer. That means I help companies and some individual executives um, basically solve all kinds of thorny legal employment related problems, sexual harassment, wage and hour, layoffs, and a hot topic, COVID. A sick topic. All the time. <laughs> right. Well, you must be quite busy in this economy because it seems like, you know, some of these topics, they used to be less common than they are today. And today they just seem so so much more common in business. Do you have a you have a thought about all of that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, what I'm getting now, well, since the pandemic, it's been crazy busy with layoffs and COVID questions. I think some clients think I'm an MD instead of a JD, which I'm I'm not an MD. I may play one at times, but I'm really not. <laughs> um, so the hot topic now is really what to do about vaccine mandates. And of course, some employees don't want to get vaccinated. Some don't even want to get tested, believe it or not. And um, they're coming up with all kinds of medical and religious reasons. So that's a big, big topic right now. So, Mark? The, the, um, I know that's the, the medical and religious reasons, but what I'm hearing, because I, like I always say to Jeff and Nathan, it's like, my business, we're an incubator for some of these issues. We go through them. And, um, you know, I'm hearing religious exemptions are really tough to prove. And the medical exemptions, um, uh, law firms and companies are really um, taking them very specifically to heart because um, with everything going on. Um, what are you seeing as far as trending, though, in terms of um, policies that, um, on one hand, I'm hearing from companies and law firms that are mandating, well, if they're telling us candidates need to be vaccinated to work here. Right. Um, and then I talked to another client, well, we're going to follow the guidelines, um, CDC guidelines. We're not mandating. We could eventually mandate vaccines. But for, for as an employment lawyer, what, what, what are you advising your, your clients now? I'm advising clients to mandate the vaccine. I think it's frankly, it's a no brainer. Um, in fact, EEOC, the agency that enforces the federal anti-discrimination laws issued a guidance in May 2021 in which they said employers can mandate the vaccines. Now, nobody wanted to do that um, until the FDA issued approval, final approval for Pfizer. So a lot of people were reluctant. A lot of employers were very reluctant. They kept saying, you know, it's no secret. It's a, it's a hard time to hire good people right now. But employers were wary of that. But since the Pfizer vaccine was approved, um, there's been a sea change. Many employers are now mandating the vaccine. Of course, government contractors have to, have to do it, um, or soon will have to do it, I should say. The the OSHA rule is pending right now at the White House. It could come out any day now. Um, and also President Biden has announced that employers of 100 or more are gonna have to mandate vaccines or testing. So I, I think there's been a real sea change. Um, and now we're seeing less argument from clients about should I mandate? It's more about what do I do with the recalcitrants who don't wanna be vaccinated? Right. The interesting part though that I'm finding is that Biden can say federally, this is what you need to do. Right. But you have st Texas and Florida and certain states that aren't going to enforce that because of states' rights. And if 
somebody's not in the federal space. Like for example, I had to suddenly fly out for my first time in almost two years and you go to mm. the airport, it's mass. Whether or not you're um, in Texas, Florida or Massachusetts, it's mandated because the airports are run federally. There's, they're right. not run by the state. So you can have that. But in terms of, my question is in terms of enforcement, in terms of what they can do. Now, I believe the Supreme Court also said that you could have that vaccine policy. Is that correct? Yes. Well, I think it's a question really of a um, of federal preemption. Now, whether President Biden is going to send, you know, the military down to Texas and Florida to enforce the vaccine mandate, I, I don't think so, because it would be sort of a political nightmare. But, you know, you have OSHA, OSHA, Occupational Safety and Health Act, it's a federal law. Um, there are inherent police powers, not just in the states, but in the federal government. So if OSHA comes out with a rule that says, you know, employees got to be vaccinated, that's a federal, that's an issue of federal preemption. Frankly, Florida don't want to do it. It'll probably be a battle that's fought out in the courts, and I think they're going to lose. But so people will die in the process. That's what the about what about unions? And I know you say it's the law that you know they have ten percent. You know, let's say a negotiator for a union, they have ten percent of their workforce that doesn't want vaccines. They want to keep their position in the union, negotiating, and they, uh, you know, if you know, so they have to fight it to keep their position because it's a good position but you have the federal law. So, what, you know, how do we break that stalemate? Because I understand politics. Of course. So the whole thing with unions, it's been sort of surprising to me, although maybe I shouldn't have been surprised that, you know, some of the police unions, some of the fire unions, fire department unions, and the correctional officers, for example, are very opposed to a mandated vaccine. However, um, all employers really have to do is bargain in good faith and reach what's known as an impasse. An impasse is a term of art in labor law. So at some point you sit down for a few sessions or maybe more with the union and you, you make clear to them, this is what we're gonna do. You've tried to work it out. The unions may want some time off. They may want some money for getting the vaccine. You work all those issues out, but at the end of the day, at some point, and I can't tell you exactly when that point is because it's situational, varies, the employer is going to declare an impasse and, and say, this is it. We're mandating the vaccine, like it, don't like it, and people who don't do it are going to be suspended without pay or probably eventually terminated. And the union, but I don't think at the end of the day, they're going to find much support, either from the National Labor Relations Board or even if it's individual cases that go to arbitration. You know, it's interesting. It's happening across the country and it's being tested. And um, uh, for example, I was reading about um, University of Washington's football coach was fired. They gave the right. state of Washington all their employees needed to be vaccinated. And they right. gave him a lot of time. He said he, and he wouldn't, and so they let him go. So I, I think employers, unlike in the beginning of COVID, are being more proactive. There are saying, look, this is what we need to do, as opposed to um, in the beginning of COVID, which it's like, you know, sort of wending your way, so to speak. Sure. Well, Mark, well, you and I live in uh, what I would call a big COVID uh, vaccine supporting state. Right. There seems to be pockets of states that are have a whole different political and philosophical uh, angle on this. And I think that was interesting what Valerie said, we don't think the president's going to send in uh, troops to enforce it. And, you know, if we're looking to get to be, let's say, like Canada that has, you know, 85 percent people are vaccinated. We don't hear, even though we sort of have the vaccine more than anyone else. Uh, we have a little bit of a, a problem, you know, trying to get, you know, mass vaccinations. That seems to be a problem trying to get that last pocket of people in those right. states vaccinated. I don't know. If Valerie, if you have the magic pill that tells us how to close that gap, I'm sure that I'm sure everybody would like to know how to make that happen. Well, I wish I had the magic pill, but I think what we're seeing is, except for a few pockets of resistance, and frankly, in a lot of those places, people don't even want to wear masks 
which is just crazy to me. I, I mean, on a personal level, I think it's just nuts. But, you know, what can you do? Some people have politicized this. It should never have been politicized, in my humble opinion. I mean, think about it. In the 1950s, we had polio in this country. We no longer have polio. Why? Vaccines. If polio vaccine came out today, people would be protesting against it. It's just frankly crazy. And I think employers realize that the economy is going to suffer if the vast majority don't get vaccinated. Their individual companies are definitely going to suffer. Look at the Red Sox. I mean, I, I live in Massachusetts too, so I'm very into the Red Sox. The Red Sox had a whole slew of players get COVID. Crazy. It's just crazy. I, I don't have a magic bullet. I wish I did. <laughs> well, it's it's interesting how people, you know, relate this to their individual liberties. And I agree with you. Uh, I think people compare it very different than polio. You know, this whole quick process of approval, which I think was pretty outstanding. They use that against them, that it was approved quickly, uh, that it yeah. isn't the official approval process. I think it's great that they got it into the, uh, the country's system so quickly. And, and a sign of adapting during a crisis. It's like, you know, they adapted quickly to Pearl Harbor too. When you're at war, you have to adapt quickly. Exactly, plus these M MNRA vaccines have been in production since the 1990s. It's not like on in March, 2020, they just started researching this. Plus to your point, you know, the Supreme Court has always said, you can't yell fire in a crowded theater. There's a very famous Massachusetts case from the early 20th century, Jacobson versus Massachusetts, in which the smallpox vaccine was mandated and someone didn't want to get it. And um, he suffered a criminal penalty. I think it was a fine. This went all the way to the U.S. Supreme Court and they said, hey, liberty is great, but liberty ends when you're endangering other people. And that's exactly the case with COVID. You can spread it to vulnerable people. You can spread it to little kids. You can cause grandma and grandpa to die. So at that point, your liberty ends and the rights of other people to be healthy prevail. It's right. that. Well, right. you know, uh, you're definitely speaking to the converted. So it's hard to, hard to say, and we don't have a debate here from somebody representing the other side. But that's always frustrating because it doesn't seem to be a open scientific perspective on any kind of discussion on this. You know, the only other thing I'm going to say is I never realized before how dominating those two Z's are beside Mark. I feel like I'm dealing with I feel like I'm dealing with Samson and the pillars are, are, are protecting him to his side. And, you know, it's it's more powerful than the vaccine, Mark. It's a pretty <laughs> impressive thing. But uh, Valerie, no joking aside, if someone wants to get hold of you, clearly you're an expert in your area, and we hope you come back to Radio Entrepreneurs again. You bring bring a great perspective. How would how would our listeners find you? Well, the easiest way to find me is to go to errantfox.com. It's A-R-E-N-T-F-O-X.com. I um, live and work in the Boston area, so go there plug in my name and I'll, all my information will pop up and give me a call or send me an email. Well, and uh, Mark Z, the Samson of radio entrepreneurs with your pillars being held up on the sides. How do people find you, you powerhouse you? Larry will get you everywhere. Um, first of all, just Google Mark Z, M-A-R-C and the letter Z and we'll come right up or markzlegal.com, M-A-R-C-Z-L-E-G-A-L.com or 617 338 one, uh, Mark, thanks a lot. And as usual, you are the pillar of power and success on Radio Entrepreneurs. Valerie, uh, we need a commitment that you're going to come back again with Mark and talk again about these topics. The more we focus in on this, I think the better it'll be. The more I'm happy to come back. I do want to say that when I see those two Z's, I think either of Zorro or ZZ Top. <laughs> Take that complimentary. <laughs> you should see his underwear if you think those are impressive. <laughs> hey, let's not go there. I'm going to take a pass on that. <laughs> well, so this is a G-rated show. GP. It's a family show. Let's That's not right. Well, That's I right. bought, I, I'll, I'll, full disclosure, I took a picture of my dog. I have socks made from it, pajamas for my wife. 
I got doggy, personalized doggy, everything. So. Well, I love dogs too. I have, I took my dog to Sears many years ago and had pictures. For the holidays? Uh, not holidays, just portraits. So you can do. That's the way to go. Too. Well, again, this is Radio Entrepreneurs and we can say based on this interview, you heard it here first. So uh, I want to thank everybody for joining us and remind everyone to tune in to Radio Entrepreneurs.